always nice to come back after being away for a week when I was in the Czech Republic this time at the International Conference to get back to our own garden to see the changes how the leaf canopy is coming out the lovely red acers contrasting with the, the green leaves of the canopy so just join me as a well, we walk and review what's happening. Troughs. A lot of things are a bit slow because it's been very dry. The troughs and the bonsais. Some of the plants that have come out really well. This is Corydalis Craigs in purple. This is my trial one. This is my selected from the, all the seedlings I've got between Corydalis Craigs in blue and Corydalis Capitata with Capitata being the seed parent. So this is the best one and I'm working it up. And we'll start to send a few out and we'll start to distribute that a wee bit to see how it goes. So the trough area, I think things feel a bit slow. I'll need to check my record, see if they are, but they've slowed down because of the dryness. But phloxes, they don't do nearly so well in our climate as they do in where we saw them near Prague and around the gardens there, phloxes love the warm climate there. They're not so keen on our climate. So there's a lot there, the erythronium's now all but finished. There's one or two erythronium montanums in flower still, but most of the erythroniums are over. Looking for a good seed set, there's some not looking like they're setting seed, but others are doing quite well. past the yellow grass. I love these effects. Just in a garden it's simple things. The fern and the bowls golden grass. Into the who's Corydalis nobilis. Kind of gone over a bit. But as we come round it's getting more woodsy now. To say the the canopy above. is making the areas quite shaded down here. Ovularia, Grandiflora, different shades of bluebells. We come round here, the peony emodii. Absolutely beautiful. And over here, if I just move round past the bonsai, past the emodii, up here we can come up and we can see another beautiful peony, peony della vi. So as you look round and the bulb bed looks very different now, heavy in foliage, lots of growth, most of the bulbs, spring bulbs are down in there, we'll be thinking of going back underground for the summer. So now we've got Diasporums, these lovely little, they come up and give you good North American woodlanders. Here's a, another, a delphinium species, I don't know what it is, from again raised from North American seed. Various alliums, and round above us, the beautiful rhododendron, Albert Schweitzer, an old hybrid. And then above that, the Acer Crimson King. Just a few flowers up there on the decorum this year. Not so many as there were last year. The beds below looking less colourful, but it's starting to come. There's Corydalis, some of the crate in blue, there's Dicentrus. There are some nice flowers. There's some bulbs, the later flowers always prittle area. Camshatensis. This is the Alaskan form. One from Alaska and from the North America. So we've got this lovely green back and absolutely black inside. And you'll get variations on that. So that's one. And if we move round here, here's another variation. With less green on the back than that one. The trillium's going over. 
the leaves of Cardiocrinum giganteum. Not going to flower this year. We had flowers, two flower stems from the plants last year. Past various trilliums. All a bit battered by the rain and snow still, but they had their season this year. They'll hang on, hopefully they'll give us seed. The one that's still, still looking fresh, except for a chewed hole. Seat in the hedge, there's lilies to come. There's a lot more to come, of course. Nice clump of Fritillaria pontica. And that hole, of course, there, looking back, that was where one of the big trees we took down came from. It's now gone, so this bed's getting a bit more light. Some of the Dicentra cucularia leaves have collapsed perhaps prematurely because of the dryness. But bulbs, bulbs are well conditioned to be happy with that. The girls have heard something. They're off to see something. So let's just keep going round. Here's a clump of Corydalis craked in purple that I trialled in the garden. It's important when you trial plants that you trial them in different situations. So this is in quite reasonable shade. So we'll see, but I'm, I'm still very pleased with it as a plant. First of the Silmizias starting to open, Silmizia walkeri, the dwarf rhododendrons. This is rhododendron sarlid creeping all around here. So the lovely alpine. Lovely alpine rhododendrons. They're really, really pretty. Tiny little flowers. As you look back across, you can see if I pan up the canopies of the, the trees with the gateway leading through to the pond. Rhododendron machinoi. That very wonderful narrow foliage covered in flowers this year. Very narrow foliage and when the new leaves come out they're covered in a rich thick white indumentum. It needs a feed this one. It's I find that Mackinoy, like Yakushimenum, are plants from very wet climates and they sometimes don't get enough nitrogen so you can see that checking intervenal chlorosis. So it's needing a good feed. We'll give it a good feed of a nitrogen based fertilizer with maybe some iron to help it take up the nitrogen that's in the soil. To down in here the pond looking very green and lovely. It's the Pinguicula Island that is really good. I love my wee Pinguicula Island. It's the these lovely little insectivorous I can see the leaves are all dotted with picking up and eating all the the midges and the flying insects. And you'll see a little white one there. Kind friend sent us a white one to add to the island, so now we've got the, a white one. So they're increasing nicely. The orchid leaves are good. They're growing well. There's a few tree seedlings in there I need to get out. and The decision of what to leave in there and what to take out is mine alone. But for now, the the wires off the top because the birds have stopped building nests and stopped pulling the, the moss off. So. so as we move down the pond, it's around the pond there's various pots. This is a little pot. All these orchids self-seeded into that pot. And it's amazing how they do in that little pot. Very, it gets very dry in dry conditions. And in contrast, out there, on the other island, with the Salix lanata, if we just move in, you'll see all over the place more orchids, and that's permanently submerged, or half submerged in water. So it is very contrasting. It is a Griseum. Let's just move around here to finish the 
laburnum, I gave it a very big haircut last year, good prune, it's coming into flower, it'll soon be a lovely archway of flower, but the rhododendron fortuni, again masses of flowers up there, mostly going over, but a heavenly scent. And if we come down to the bed where the mass of erythroniums were, all now, quite a lot of them up here look to be setting seed. The ferns growing at the back, there's lilies planted in there. A row of aquilegias along the front. So all sorts of plants that can combine. And I suppose we'll, I'll just finish now, because come around to this trough. Which is appropriate after being to the Czech gardens and all their crevices, this is one of my crevice troughs. Crevices made of old broken paving slabs and planted up with Ram Ramonda myconii and Ramonda nathalii. Flower is now going over a bit. So I'll leave you there with this part walk, or this walk round part of the garden.